I ain't gonna lie, he started off good. It looked like he started off good. Well, he, um, he it did. seemed like he was right in the fight. He did everything he's supposed to do, and he landed that shot. Right. But when that shot didn't bother Bud, I just started shaking my head. I said, it's over. Because if he couldn't knock Bud out right away, I know the fight was over. It's like, if you have a box, and you have tools in it, but every job you get, you ought to be fixed with a crescent wrench. With a crescent wrench. When it comes time to use that 9 16th, or that half inch, or that screwdriver, or that hammer, all that stuff gonna be rusty. You're gonna be out of practice with using that. Therefore, the person who's been using their whole toolbox is gonna have an advantage on you. If you can't knock him out right away, you're done. What does it feel like to lose at that magnitude? A bad feeling, son. Real life. We got to get straight into it, man. We're from Dallas. You know what I'm saying? We got a boy, our boy Errol Spence versus versus Crawford. It went down. You were sitting ringside. He was actually at the, these two was at the fight too. I don't know if y'all seen each other. Um, what was your early prediction prior to the fight? My early prediction prior to the fight was that I've seen Crawford make changes. I've never seen Errol have to make changes. Therefore, I feel like Crawford will make Errol have to make changes. And because Earl hasn't had a lot of practice in making changes, he's not going to be able to do it. So I don't think he could beat Crawford. Now, one chance he had was if he can hit Crawford good, right. he may have been able to knock Crawford out. That's always a, a thing in boxing because if you can catch him right at the wrong time, you can't knock anybody out. Yeah. That was the only chance I thought he had going in, though. Yeah, man. And, and, and to watch the fight, man, it's, it, I ain't going to lie, he started off good. It looked like he started off good. Well, he, um, he it did. seemed like he was right in the fight. He did everything he's supposed to do, and he landed that shot. Right. But when that shot didn't bother Bud, I just started shaking my head. I said, it's over. Because if he couldn't knock Bud out right away, I know the fight was over. It's like, if you have a box, and you have tools in it, but every job you get, you ought to be fixed with a crescent wrench. With a crescent wrench. When it comes time to use that 9 16th, or that half inch, or that screwdriver, or that hammer, all that stuff gonna be rusty. You're gonna be out of practice with using that. Therefore, the person who's been using their whole toolbox is gonna have an advantage on you. If you can't knock him out right away, you're done. What does it feel like to lose at that magnitude? It's a bad feeling, son. It's a bad feeling. Especially when you're a warrior like Earl is, and you're a warrior like myself. It's a bad feeling. Even though, you know, it's like, we know our body is not the same. Your body's not the same after going through an accident, getting thrown from a car at above 117 miles per hour. So you do think that played a role? Of course it plays a role. Come on, man, there's no way they cannot play a role. I'm, listen, I'm not a hater. I don't hate nobody. And I'm not taking nothing away from Bud, but the facts are the facts. You understand me? I'm an example. You understand? I lost 25 pounds coming from heavyweight back down to like heavyweight. My body never was the same. You got in a car wreck, you got thrown from a car doing 117 miles per hour. Your body not the same. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I mean, and that's no excuse. That's not the reason why he lost. I don't think he would have beat Bud anyway because he had been working on all of his tools all the time. Right. But your body is not the same after that, trust me. So you think Earl Spence, can he beat him? Is there, is there any no, way? Not now, his body's not the same anymore. I mean, he gonna give him a better fight at 54, maybe if he makes some adjustments. Yeah. But I don't know that he gonna beat him because to me, I don't think his body is the same. Now, if he get uh, make adjustments and make sure he doesn't get caught, like he did when he fought Garcia, like he did when he fought, um, um, he fought two guys since the wreck. Those guys couldn't catch with nothing significant. Yeah. He made sure that with his pressure. So if you don't catch with nothing significant, he'll beat you because he's still good, you know? Now, a lot of people made a lot of big deal of uh, Bud coming out with Eminem. Do you play, does that, does that have any psychological effect, do you think? When you're walking out with lose yourself in a moment? Well, it can and it can't. And I'll tell you why. And that's a good question. When I fight, when I fight, if I got a hype song, I don't care what you get. Now, we're going to match up a little bit, but I don't care what you get. Now, you can't outdo me in that. If you outdo me, it's going to have a little bit of psychological effect on me. If you outdo me, 
I'm, 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 all that does have psychological effect. So, like, when I fought John Reese, when I fought John Reese, Scarface bought me out. Yeah. You can't top that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was not worried about him topping it because that's my favorite. Right. So, you could have bought anybody with you. It didn't matter. It, you could, you wasn't topping it. Right. But here, where you made a mistake, it, you came out to, uh, I think, um, is it Billy? I think it might have been Billy Joel. Anyway, the song he came out to was also one of my favorite songs. <laughs> so you done messed up twice. I got super hyped when I came out. And when you came out, you hyped me up a little bit more. Hype off your shit. You feel me? Now I'm just so, hyped. Because you don't understand my musical diversity. Yeah. You understand me? You thought you was going way somewhere to the north. You still landed in my yard. So you helped me twice. <laughs> I said, I know you in trouble. I done got two walkout songs. Oh, yo. Hey. Um, back to Earl Spence. So when he lost the fight, you see the whole city pretty much change on him. Like, like switch sides. Do you ever experience anything like that? Of course. When I lost the first time to Tarver, I went to IHOP and a dude had put it up on a post up on the IHOP, the picture of me down with his trash talking on it because I was from Pensacola and he was from Pensacola. But I put Pensacola on the map. This the way you gonna thank me? Because I lose now, it was like that. What have you done? Nothing. What can you brag about that you did in life? Nothing, but you wanna criticize what I did. That's how it goes sometimes, you understand me? So if you're a real rider, you ride with your guy. They don't cuss out the Dallas Cowboys because they don't win the Super Bowl every year. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Hey, hey, well, yeah, well, 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 hey, well, you cuss them out, but you right back on the bandwagon next season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you don't jump off the bandwagon. You get mad because you lost. Yeah, we all get mad because we lose, but you right back on the bandwagon next season, right? Y'all, y'all still Cowboy fans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'm saying. So don't jump off the bandwagon. Don't jump off the bandwagon. Don't be an Earl Spence fan now. You've been an Earl Spence fan this long. You still be an Earl Spence fan. You know, yeah, you're mad because he lost. None of us like to lose. But you gotta still be a fan. What, what would you tell him? Earl? Yeah, if you could talk to him right now about it. I would tell Earl to, first of all, go get, get yourself checked out neuro neurologically, make sure yeah. you're okay, because you did get thrown from a car doing 100 miles an hour, over 100 miles an hour. Secondly, if you do want to box again, go to the lab, talk to some people, see what you're missing, see what you may be sleeping on yourself, because from what I understand, you've been a pretty good fighter your whole life. But there's some aspects of it that you haven't had to use that if you're going to be champ again, you're going to have to make some changes. Because some of these things that you stop using, you're going to have to start back to using if your body's capable of holding up to do it. But your body got to be capable of holding up first. So forget what people say. You made a lot of money. You did something a lot of people would never do. You understand me? You became a unified world champion even after being thrown out of a car at 100 miles an hour, excess of 100 miles an hour. You're lucky to even be alive. Forget about the bad. You did something people never do. You made a super fight. Use one half of that super fight. You understand me? If you can do it again, cool. If you can't, what you gotta worry about? You got paid, brother. Go enjoy your life. If your body can't hold up, now if your body can hold up, go back, find somebody that Got this to help you figure out where you went wrong at in it. Try to tighten it up and see what you can do. I know you can become a junior middleweight champ because you've been putting yourself down too long anyway. So if you became welterweight champ, you can become a junior middleweight champ. But you got to step back and evaluate everything first. Don't do it because other people say do it. Do what God leads you to do.